Hi, this is Francis Potter, Senior Solution Architect with GitLab. I'm here to talk about merge trains today. Actually, I'm going to talk about pipelines for merge requests and pipelines for merged results, they're different, and merge trains. And I'm going to try to explain it as well as I can understand, um, and we'll see some of the kind of quirks and weirdnesses along the way. So let's dive in. First off, when does GitLab run pipelines? I'm going to start very simple here. There are a whole bunch of events that trigger pipeline runs within GitLab. A new commit, a new branch, a new tag, those all have to be pushed if you're working locally, of course. Uh, you, can run job, you can run pipelines manually, you can use, do it through an API call, you can do it on, as a scheduled pipeline run. There are a whole range of different things that trigger pipeline runs and it's important to understand these. Now, there is a variable that you get in GitLab CI that helps you understand what caused your pipeline to be run. It's called CI pipeline source. Um, excuse the fact that this is all lowercase, it should be uppercase. Um, and it has a very specific set of values and can only have one of these values to tell you what's triggering the run of your pipeline. So I'm not gonna dive into all of these, but there are a couple of them that are really important to understand. The first is that a push pipeline covers new commits, new branches, and new tags. And if you're working locally and pushing, then there's push pipeline for that. But also if you're working in the UI, you're also pushing. And that includes if you click the new branch button on the branches page, or you click the create a merge request from this issue button on the issues page, which creates a branch, those actually generate a push, which generate a pipeline. And it's important to recognize that. Also important to recognize that a push action can trigger multiple pipelines. And I know of three cases where it can trigger multiple pipelines. One is if you have multiple branches in the same push, it'll trigger multiple pipelines. If you have multiple tags in the same push, it'll trigger multiple pipelines. Or if you're inside a merge request and you have both merge request pipelines, which we'll get to, and push pipelines in the same pipeline, you'll run to uh, potentially on the same commit, um, which can be really weird. So we're gonna talk today mostly about merge request event, but it's important to kind of have this in the context of the different things that cause a pipeline to run. Okay, uh, if you look in the pipelines list view, right next to like, like halfway through the middle, there's a little icon and it's one of these three, as near as I can tell, these are the only three values. One of them is for a branch or a commit. And this is your basic pipeline, runs every time there's a new commit on a branch or a new branch, okay? And you can detect that in your rules by just saying if CI commit branch. There's also a tag run, uh, which runs whenever a new tag is created and pushed, and you can detect it in rules with if CI commit tag, super useful for releases, right? Finally, there's a merge request pipeline, which runs on any new commit in an MR, but only if there is a rule, and the rule should say this, if CI pipeline source equals, equals merge request event. All right, and this is what we're really gonna talk about because it is odd and weird and powerful and wonderful and magic. Okay, so to get the context, a typical pipeline is a branch pipeline. It has a branch icon in the name of a branch. This is your normal pipeline that runs most of the time when you change code within GitLab, whether you're in master or you're in a feature branch, doesn't matter. You get these, these branch pipelines all the time. But we're talking today about a special case which is the merge request pipeline, okay? A merge request pipeline is detected with a rule that says if CI pipeline source is merge request event, and then you're in the context of the merge request. That will only run on a new commit inside an existing merge request. It will not run on branch creation. It will not run, despite what the documentation might say, it will not run on the creation of a merge request alone. And it will also not run on updates to the merge request in the database, like changing the description or anything like that. It only runs on commits that are within the merge request. Okay? Now, it's important to note that there's a kind of a hidden rule which blocks merge request event. So if you don't have any jobs with this rule in it, you might not get merge request pipelines. Okay, so there are a couple of ways you can actually force a merge request pipeline to happen, but this is the way to make sure that it happens. The other thing to note is if you have some jobs with this rule and some jobs without this rule, you can end up with two pipelines on the same commit. Your merge request pipeline 
and your branch pipeline, and that is confusing as hell, but it could happen. All right, what does a merge request pipeline look like? It looks exactly the same in the list with two exceptions. Three, I guess. The first is this icon is no longer a branch icon, it's a merge request icon. That is a merge request, or it's a merge at least. This number here is actually the merge request ID, which is interesting. And there's a label here that says detached. Um, I don't actually know why it says detached. I don't know the meaning of the word detached in this context. Um, in my mind, I'm very, very attached to this. This is my merge request, but it's for some reason we call it detached. And that's what we do. So why? Why do you want merge request pipelines? I've been able to come up with three reasons, okay? The first is, and this is pretty cool, it only runs on MRs. Um, and as an example, if you want to encourage your developers to use MRs and not to just be branching off willy-nilly, then make all the pipelines merge request pipelines and they're only going to see results when they actually run them on a merge request, when they actually operate in a merge request. So there's some power there and there's an advantage there. You could also make your pipelines run on merge request and on master, right? Um, the second is they don't run on empty branches. So you're kind of working around that quirk in GitLab where whenever you create an empty branch, you're running your whole set of your tests and everything. Um, but the third, which is super cool, is you can do pipelines for merged results. But you kind of got to understand what those are, how they're used, and when they run in order to take advantage of the power. And so I'm going to hopefully break that down a little bit in this presentation. All right, pipelines for merged results. In order for a pipeline for merged result to run, four things need to be true. Okay, the first is you have to have a merge request pipeline like we just saw. All right. The second is you have to have pipelines for merged results configured in your project. And it's here under settings, general merge requests, pipeline for merge results. So check that checkbox if you want the magic. The third is you need to have a merge request that is in ready state, not in draft state. Okay. Or if you're a couple of versions old, it's not in work in progress state, WIP, right? So that mark is ready button needs to be hit and you need to be ready to roll. And the fourth is you need to have no merge conflicts on the MR, okay? For it to merge, so it can be merged back into master with no interaction and no res resolution of merge conflict. Now, if all four of those things are true, you can run a pipeline for merged results, but it doesn't run automatically because the last thing you did was to click mark as ready and say, hey, this thing is ready, but you haven't, you haven't made a commit and so you haven't actually triggered the pipeline. If you want to trigger a pipeline for merge result yourself, you gotta switch over to the pipelines tab within the merge request and click the run pipeline button. And that will actually kick off a pipeline for merged result, all right? Um, now, what does that look like? When you go back up to the pipelines list, it looks a little bit the same as a regular pipeline for merge request, except that there's no detached icon, no detached badge, right? So it's got a merge request icon, a merge request ID, and it does not say detached. Near as I can tell, that's the only way to tell in the pipeline list uh, what is a pipeline for merge result, okay? On the merge request itself, it says merge result, merged result pipeline. Super cool, merged result pipeline. What does that mean? Well, I think what it means is that GitLab took your MR, your branch in your MR, performed a pretend merge, or a pretend rebase, it doesn't really matter because we're not, it doesn't run at all if there are merge conflicts, okay? Uh, with the target branch, typically master, and then it ran the pipeline on the pretend merged uh, state of the repo, okay? And the challenge here is that except for the same merged result pipeline, there's not a lot of indication here that this is completely different from what you did on the previous commit when you, uh, or on this commit before, when you, um, we're running it on only the changes that were in the merge request, okay? And you can't view that pretend merge code. To my knowledge, there's no way to see that code. So you can't really see what's going on with it. That code is not committed to the repo. What GitLab does is it performs that pretend merge, runs the pipeline, and then drops it, okay? Now, that's all great. What if you don't wanna click that button? What if you just wanna, hey, I am done. My branch is green. My work is done. I am ready to go out for a drink right? Well, fortunately, there's this button that says start merge train. So WTF is a merge train, right? Merge train, what is that? Okay, merge train is where the magic happens. I'm going to try and explain this. And if I've got this wrong, I hope someone will help me out because it's hard to figure out. So I've got a diagram here. Now, you are developer number one, all right? You're working alone today. 
and uh, you're working on merge request one, and merge request one is green, it's happy. Green meaning that your tests and your security scans and everything in your merge request are passing, and the merge request is ready to be merged, okay? Now, you've got this master branch that you wanna merge into. The, the latest commit on the master branch I'm calling commit A. These round circles are commits, okay? The squares are branches, commit A. Um, when you click merge train, okay, you're gonna put MR1 on the merge train, and what GitLab is gonna do is it's gonna pull commit A, and MR1, it's gonna do that fake merge to make a, I'm gonna call it B, it's not really a commit yet, but I'm gonna call it B, and it's gonna run the pipeline in there. If B runs green, meaning everything passes on the pipeline, then GitLab is going to merge B into master. It's actually probably just gonna copy B into master, I'm not really sure exactly what it does, but the point is the commit B ends up in master. You're out having a drink. That all happened while you were gone. It assumed that if MR1 is already green, you've marked it ready, and that it's merging green with commit A, that it's good to go, and it drops it into master. Master stays green, okay? So now let's say similar situation, but this time around, there are two developers working together, <clears throat> and uh, they call over, you know, from one desk to the next, hey, you wanna go out for a drink? Sure, yeah, you know, there's a new place open down the street. Uh, they're serving martinis. Great, let's go. So they both put their commits on the merge train. First, MR1 goes on the merge train. Then MR2 goes on the merge train. And the developers go out for a drink. So what happens? Okay, GitLab does the same thing. It pulls from commit A and tests merge with B, tests merge with C, which is this new commit here. Uh, B runs green. Great, we've got B in master. But now what about this C? This C here isn't really right, right? Because C was merged with A. You merged A with MR2 to get C, okay? And that test merge, that dummy merge. But that's not right anymore because now we have B. We haven't tested MR2 merged with B. So what GitLab does is it, this is the train. These are the tracks, choo, 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 right? We take B, merge it with MR2, create D, test D. D runs green, drop D in master. Master stays green. Everybody's happy. They're out drinking, they're having a great time and it all works. And it all works without them having to do it or think about it, all right? So this, remember, this all assumes no merge conflicts. If there's a merge conflict, this can't happen automatically. Okay, let's try a different condition here. Let's say there are three developers and they're gonna go to the big company party and they are jonesing to get out of the, out of the door and they all drop their green MRs on the merge train right before they head out the door. So. What does GitLab do? It takes commit A and it does test merges with B, C, and E, okay? All of them, test merges with all of them. B passes and gets dropped into master. So now GitLab does a test merge between B and MR2, but this time it's red. This time MR2, when test merged with B, doesn't pass. Some unit test fails or a security scan fails or whatever the thing is that you're testing for. It doesn't matter to me right now, right? So merge request two isn't ready. It can't go into master because it's running red, right? So what happens with MR3? Well, guess what? GitLab proceeds. It drops MR2. Test merges commit B with commit uh, with MR3 to make commit F no longer E make commit F, F runs green, and F gets dropped into master, so master stays green, never goes red, all right? The, when you get back from the party, developer number two is gonna have some work to do that night, but developers one and three can go home because their stuff merged just fine, right? So that is the idea behind a merge train. The idea is that each MR gets test merged with the latest version in master, the latest commit in master, and must run green and then that commit is put into master so that you never run red in master. You don't just sort of like merge, right? You don't, you never merge. You just put things on the merge train and GitLab double checks everything before it merges using pipelines for merged results. Now what's really interesting here is that I've heard that all this happens in parallel which if you think about it is kind of a combinatorial problem. So there are tons of little pipelines running. I, I don't really understand how that works, but apparently that is how it works. Uh, and there's a limit actually to 20 
MR is running in parallel on, on a merge train. Okay, now, I mentioned before double pipelines. Um, yeah, don't, like be careful about double pipelines. And that's all I got. Thank you very much. And I'm going to stop my recording.